One other aspect, we also discovered that there are many societies, civil societies, organizations, working to clean the country from the landmines, which was an uh, international initiative. And uh, many women and men, of course, and more specifically, children were suffered from the bombing of the uh, landmines that was still in, in many areas uh, in the country. So more women joined the uh, training to be part of the uh, volunteers to clean these landmines. And it is part also of the implementation of Resolution 1325. Also, the problem of the involvement of women NGOs, because they were not aware of the resolution and they were not uh, realizing enough where this resolution can fit in the situation of Jordan, while Jordan has more than uh, uh, 750,000 Iraqi refugees and they have more than one million and a half to two million Palestinian refugees in the countries who are still living in refugee camps and still facing many challenges related to the conflict situations that they are uh, living since years now. And those women are in much need to our efforts as women NGOs to help uh, uh, them surviving first and then uh, uh, being part of, of the uh, peace building and the peace negotiations and the peace uh, and the, and the re, uh, rehabilitation efforts and rebuilding of their societies. We think that women, after they were away, they are still in need of enough support by the international community, which is not really allocating enough resources for projects related to this resolution. And many women NGOs want to work on this issue, this topic, but it is not uh, uh, recognized enough by the international donors community. Also, the national states are not allocating any, any specific uh, uh, resources for these uh, resolutions. We do believe that linking the issue with the daily life of women, with the violence against women, with the need of security for uh, uh, protection and security for every woman uh, is a must. And I do agree with, with my previous colleagues who were mentioning that this differentiation between uh, human rights and public space and human rights and private spaces is very important. And I think security is security. Women need to feel security at home also. And I think the fight and the war is not the type of relation between states and, uh, and uh, on, on national levels only, but the war can be also like kind of a fight between human beings at home. When there is lack of power and there is this, this trend of uh, patriarchy of uh, imposing the will against the weakest uh, figures in the family, this is a war in a way. And we do need to provide women with protection, participation and negotiations and decision making within the family also. And I think we can make the link between the public and the war at large and also the type of relation that is, exists in the family. The other, the other issue is that it was mentioned this morning where the resource of hu human rights is, the values, from where values are coming. I think it's simply very, very natural thing. You, the child, when the child is born and he's hungry or she is hungry, they cry. If they were hurt, they will cry. If they will feel cold or uncomfortable, they will cry. They are asking for rights. It was not coming to, to their feelings by uh, international conventions or by education or by God teaches. It is there by nature. And I think this is the main resources of the dignity of human being and the main values of justice and uh, the, 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 the need to meet the basic needs of human beings. And because of that, I think those values were, of course, God teaching despite of coming through uh, 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 any, any type of religious, is for the, 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 good, uh, the good values of justice, love, freedom, humanity, that is a right of everybody. It cannot be used to ignore or to discriminate any, against any human being. And it is strange that through the history, 
we can recognize how much the patriarchy and the, 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 those who are, who are holding power uh, were using religious for their own uh, political and, uh, and powerful uh, uh, needs. And it was interpreter, it was used, it was, uh, it was um, a tool in, in the hands of many political groups to, uh, to continue uh, uh, gaining more power and to continue controlling other people, in spite of being uh, female or people who are uh, less power than the, uh, the people in, in, uh, in power. I, I just want to say that uh, despite of the elements that was used, the injustice situation where women are living under, and the injustice results that we are watching every day is something that we need in the name of God and in the name of humanity and in the name of any human values need to be rejected, need to be refused. And we need to adopt our own understanding, our own uh, uh, interpretation, our own uh, needs and reflecting them to be part of the legislation. And because of that, I think the rest of the, uh, or the details of the human, human rights issues and the public freedoms is coming from the uh, social contracts that is uh, happening uh, by legislation, by adopting uh, constitutions, for example, or by uh, uh, adopting resolutions on the international level or international conventions. It is kind of a contract where uh, groups are in a position to negotiate and then to come to, the, to a common understanding and beliefs and uh, to adopt a specific and common values. When we reach this point, the main challenge is how to implement it. Are, were, were they serious when they signed it? Were they serious when they adopting the constitutions or it was part of the political game? If it is a political game, we are the powers who need to see this game work for us. So we need to see these constitutions and these resolutions and these conventions implemented on the ground. And I can, can tell you, we were talking about the elite woman and the grassroots woman. I can tell you from my own experience with the very grassroots level women in, in my country and in, in my region, they are fully understand, fully understanding the human rights principles and they fu are fully believing in these principles and they are really willing to work to see them work. It is not true that they are not aware or they, or they cannot be part of this international uh, 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 discussion. They need to be heard and they need to be uh, listened to because they do know very deeply what peace, what security, <coughs> what human rights principles means to them, to their daily life and to their, uh, to their children, uh, despite of, of, of the situations around them. And I can tell you that they need to be respected enough because usually we women sometimes uh, deal with them as they, they still need, still need to be aware. They are aware already. We need to be able to listen to them and we need to be able to reflect their needs on this level of international type of networking or partnerships. And that's why I really appreciate what WLP is doing because the local NGOs that are involved in the partnership are really working with these uh, grassroots women and they are listening to them and they are trying to reflect their views when it comes to the international uh, kind of discussions. I do uh, really believe that legislation, despite of the resources, even in the Islamic world where they are saying that uh, the, the, the resource of the legislation is Islam, it is, it is always a mankind work. People, human beings, are interpreter Islam or understanding Islam or uh, 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 trying to, to uh, uh, develop legislation based on Islam. And because of that, you can see easily that in the Islamic world, we do have legislation that is secular legislation. It is not based on Islam, like the penal codes, for example, and many other, other laws. 
but only the uh, laws that are related to uh, private life, specifically family life, are still a religious laws, but it was developed uh, through the, uh, the years. Several times it was changed. And it is different from an Islamic country to another country. The family law in Iran is different from Malaysia, is different from Jordan, is different from uh, uh, Morocco. And all these countries are Islamic countries, and the family laws are based on Islam. Thank you. <laughs>